Thank you for being here. And uh, it's an honor for me to present the actual uh, item of uh, common and shared uh, strategic threats between Israel and Europe. To begin with, the, Europe the European security strategy was drawn up and adopted by the Brussels European Council of 12th and 13th of December 2003. Uh, some changes were suggested in 2009, but basically the, 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 the basic tenets did not change. It identifies the global challenges and key threats to the security of the Union and clarifies its strategic ob objectives in dealing with them, such as building security in the, U in the EU neighborhood and promoting an international order based on effective multilateralism. It also assesses the policy implications that these objectives have for Europe. In fact, Europe has never been so prosperous, so, cure, so secure, and so, and so free, and yet so vulnerable. Facts unprecedented in his European history. Europe, exactly as Israel, faces security threats and challenges. The outbreak of the conflict in the Balkans and lately in Ukraine are a reminder that war has not disappeared from the continent. Since the 90s, most <coughs> the, no region of the world has been untouched by armed conflict. Uh, <coughs> however, most of these conflicts have been within, rather between states, and most of the vic victims have been civilians. Since 1990, almost four million people have died in wars, 90% of them civilians. Over 25 million people worldwide have left their homes as a result of conflict. In Syria alone, more than 9 million people have been affected. 3 million refugees in neighboring countries and 6 million displaced from their, uh, from their homes. In most of the developing world, poverty and disease cause untold suffering. Almost 3 billion people, half of the world's population, live on less than $3 a day. 45 million die every year of hunger and malnutrition. As a result, waves of human migrations from those ill-stricken countries have tried to reach Europe and also Israel at great risk. Europe and Israel are spending huge budgets in order to contain this development which have an impact, which has an impact uh, on, on the demography trends in both, uh, in both areas. Now, competition for natural sources, mainly water, is likely to create further turbulence and migratory movements in various regions. For the sake of example, Israel receives 30% of its water from the Golan Heights and Lebanon. Even with the desalination efforts, the water issue remains of paramount importance vis-a-vis -vis Syria and Lebanon. Moreover, energy dependence is a special concern both for Europe and Israel. Europe is the world's largest importer of oil and gas. Import amount for about 50% of energy consumption. This will rise to 70% in 2030. Most energy imports come from the Gulf states, Russia and North Africa. Likewise, the discovery of the gas field offshore Israel have given Israel a possibility to develop independent energy sources for the next generation. However, the Lebanese dispute Israel's uh, discovery, and Israel is taking the right step to protect itself from possible sabotage action from Hezbollah and other terrorist groups. And Israel is considering, in fact, purchasing a, a specially equipped warships from Germany in order to counter these potential threats. To go back to the, uh, to the famous 2003 uh, uh, paper written by the European Council, the security strategy as defined in this paper identified five key threats facing Europe. Terrorism, proliferation of, work of, uh, of WMD, regional conflicts, state failures, organized crimes. Those fives are in the, paper of the, uh, in the European paper, unlike, uh, unlike Europe. We in Israel have an existential threat from some of our neighbors who would like, if they, if, if they only could, to destroy us and erase us from the face of the earth. 
66 years after its creation, Israel's right to exist as a Jewish independent sovereign nation state is still challenged. Europe and Israel have five of the six elements of national and global security. These threats are more diverse, less visible, and less predictable. No wonder that the European strategists put the item of terrorism at its first priority, because terrorism puts lives at risk. It imposes large costs and seeks to undermine the openness and tolerance of democratic societies. And it poses a growing strategic threat to the whole of Europe. Increasingly, terrorist movements are well resourced connected by electronic networks and are willing to use unlimited violence to cause massive casualties. Al-Qaeda operatives in the Sahel, who have some uh, connections in, in Europe, have developed sources of revenue, kidnapping of Westerners, cigarette and drug smuggling. The main leader of the Mojua uh, organization in Mali is called Mr. Marlboro. Why? Because this is his main business. Kidnapping with Westerners is about 80 million euros a year, which is a, quite a budget for such organizations. Terrorism, as you know, arises out of complex causes, including the pressures of modernization, cultural, social, and political crisis, and the alienation of young people living in foreign societies. The most recent wave is global in its scope and is linked to violent religious extremism. The armed conflicts in Afghanistan and Syria have created a new phenomenon. Europeans of Muslim creed have flocked by the thousands to fight the infidels. They have been taught how to manipulate weapons and explosives and have gone back to their country, countries of origin with one message, kill the infidels. The intervention of European powers in conflicts with Islamic fundamentalists such as France in Mali have soured the relations between radical local Muslims and the mainstream nation states to such extent that those young radicals have vowed openly to change the regimes and strive to create new societies built on Islamic rules. Whoever has not witnessed the manifestations in France where young Arabs, French Arabs, shout, Nique la France, Nique la France, has, do not know what, uh, what is the extent of this uh, phenomenon. Those uh, young people do not recognize the, uh, the sovereignty nor the citizenship of, the, uh, of France, which is uh, uh, one of the, uh, uh, I would say, 10% of the population at least are Muslims. And this is quite a wave. Uh, in fact, I mean, the, the, this is a constant fight between the Islamists and, uh, uh, and the, the regimes. Europe has become a target and also a base for such a terrorism. Logistical bases of Al-Qaeda cells have been uncovered in the UK, Italy, Germany, Spain, and Belgium. Now, talking about volunteers, from France alone, we talk about 1,500, from Germany, 240, from the UK, we know about, uh, about a few hundreds. From the, from the US, 100 have come to Syria and gone back, and the FBI doesn't even know who are those hundreds who came back. So uh, this, is the, this, is quite a, this is quite a phenomenon where all those, uh, all those youngsters have been uh, influenced by preachers. And those preachers have been, settling, uh, have been settled in Europe as refugees, political refugees. And those preachers have created an audience which is a very extreme audience against, uh, I mean, uh, against the state. And also, as uh, my, my friend here, said about establishing Islamic rule in those countries. The radicals have taken profit, exploited Europe's tendency to give political asylum to radical preachers who came to Europe seeking refuge. The, the, you have two, uh, two examples, wonderful examples. Khomeini in France and Ghanoushi in Tunisia, uh, the, the, the Tunisian in the, in the UK. Uh, very soon, those preachers became the source of radical preaching and a base of enrollment of volunteers for the Holy Jihad. Turning the other cheek did not restrain Al-Qaeda to perpetrate the Madrid 2004 attacks, the London Tube died in 2007, Stockholm and others. Only then, Europe understood that it had transformed into an Al-Qaeda target. Now, talking about the second item is the weapons of mass destruction, WMD. 
This is a potentially the greatest threat to Europe and Israel's security. International treaty regimes and export controls arrangements have slowed the spread of WMDs. But we are entering a new and dangerous period. Advances in the biological sciences may increase the potency of biological weapons. The most frightening scenarios could be one in which a radical terrorist state like Iran becomes nuclear, or one in which terrorist groups acquire weapons of mass destruction. It's not so far from us. In this event, a small group or a terrorist state would be able to inflict damage on an unseen and unheard scale. Here again, as has been shown in the Syrian case, German and French companies have been providing basic materials necessary for the production of such weapons in Syria. In Israel, also, greedy individu individuals did more or less the same by providing knowledge and materials to Iran. It is interesting to note that the, till the civil war in Syria, the last use of WMD was by the own terrorist sect in the Tokyo underground in 1995 when they used sarin gas. Two years earlier, AUM had sprayed anthrax spores on a Tokyo street in Syria. It appears today <coughs> that the intel intelligence gathered on the chemical attacks in Damascus and its surroundings were in fact initiated by the rebels, by the jihadists who in fact lost control of the weapons because of the change of the wind direction. Now we're talking about regional uh, conflicts, the third act. These can, be, they, this can have a direct or indirect impact on European and Israeli interests regardless of their geographical locations. Look what happened in Libya. <coughs> Libya has disintegrated as a, uh, as a state. We have... Uh, we, we have uh, militias in the west and the east. Uh, uh, Libya has been divided in three main areas. And weapons from the Libyan army come to Hamas. Weapons from the Libyan army come to Syria. Weapons from the Syrian army come to jihadists in Jordan. Uh, the Syrian opposition, on the other hand, is trying to provoke Israel to intervene in the conflict by creating, by creating events or where Israel is being hit at the border trying to provoke Israel to go inside Lebanon, to go inside Syria, on the one hand inside Lebanon in order to, the, to fight Hezbollah, and in Syria in order to, to, uh, uh, to uh, fight the Syrian army so the Assad regime becomes weaker and the opposition can take over the place. Those regional conflicts pose a threat to, uh, to uh, Europe and to Israel. The Arab Spring the so-called Arab Spring, has brought havoc on the Middle East. Libya has disintegrated, Iraq is in civil strife, Syria is almost partitioned, and so is Yemen. Egypt and Tunisia, uh, where the so-called Arab Spring began, have succeeded in putting a stop to radical Islam at the expense of the loss of much of the freedom the citizen enjoyed in previous times. Imploding states, such as Mali, and Central Arab and the African Republic have provoked military intervention by France in order to stop the possible path to civil religious war between Christians and Muslims and to protect economic interests. France's main economic interest in, those, in, uh, in Mali is of course uranium and in uh, Central Africa we're talking about also uranium and other, uh, uh, and other natural resources. Finally, the fifth element is organized crime. Europe and Israel are a prime target for organized crime, which has an important external dimension, namely trafficking in drugs, women, children, and arms. Such criminal activity is often associated with weak or failing states. 90% of the heroin in Europe comes from poppies grown in Afghanistan, where the drug trade pay for private armies. Most of it is distributed through Balkan criminal networks and are also responsible for some 200,000 out of the 700,000 women victims of the sex trade worldwide. For example, revenues from drugs have helped to undermine state structures in several drug-producing countries. Organized crime can have links with terrorism. In extreme cases, it can dominate also the state. Now, facing those, facing those elements, Europe's traditional concept of self-defense was based on the threat of invasion, but this, has, this is not uh, right now the case. With the new threats, the first line of defense, as we always saw it, as we always saw it in Israel, 
is abroad, far away from the potential target. The new threats are dynamic. The risks of proliferation grow over time. Left alone, terrorist networks will become even more dangerous. State failure and organized crime spread if they are, not, if they are neglected. This implies Israel, uh, uh, Europe and Israel should act before a crisis occurs. Conflict prevention and threat prevention cannot start too early. In contrast to the massive visible threat in the Cold War, uh, in the Cold War none of the new threats, threats is purely military. Nor can, be, nor can any be tackled by purely military means. Each requires a mixture of instruments. Proliferation may be contained through export controls and attacked through political, economic, and other pressures, while the underlying political causes also are, are also tackled. Dealing with terrorists may require a mixture of intelligence, police, judicial, military, and other means. In failed military uh, uh, instruments, uh, in failed states, military instruments may be needed to restore order, humanitarian means to tackle the immediate crisis. Regional conflicts need political solutions, but military assets and effective policing may be needed in the post-conflict phase. Economic instruments serve reconstruction, and civilian crisis management help restore civil government. As a union of, with over 500 million people, producing a quarter of the world's GNP, and with the wide range of instruments at its disposal, the European Union is inevitably a global player. As things, as things stand now, neither the European Union nor any member state is alone capable of addressing the threats we are faced with. Multilateral cooperation and bilateral partnerships with key actors are a priority and a necessity. The transatlantic uh, trans relationship is irreplaceable. Israel is a key partner that cannot be ignored, especially in these times of instability in the Middle East. Thank you very much.